And welcome to this edition of Omni Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Najib, along with Lennis Najib. And we are live on the scene once again to yep. bring you this morning Kumo cool D, cool who Mo did D. A, a man, he did an outstanding presentation when it comes to hip hop and rap. And we're going to be talking about that later in the program. Also, with one of our segment producers for AMP TV Now News, Aja Cruz, is going to give us her younger generation perspective. And then me and you have to talk about the old yes. school perspective, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because that's a whole uh, he was, different he was, thing. He's very cool with those shades on. Oh, that. the shades are right. That's why he's cool. Mo D. He uh -huh. had that name since he was 14 years old. Yeah. So we are on the campus of Fresno State. And of course, Kumo D was bought by, uh, of course, uh, Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, who's mm -hmm. been bringing this series to us. Mm -hmm. We had Reverend Wright one week, and of course, this week is Kumo D, and we'll be continue to have these type of speakers. And we want to let you know that you can continue to watch On Me Sunday mornings, all the past episodes, by going to onmetv.amptvnow. That's onmetv.amptvnow. You can also listen to past episodes on the radio every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and that you can listen to live on your mobile phone by going to 1680 now, or just listen to the radio dial on 1680 AM. And right after that, we have AMP TV Now News, our live segment. And of course, we have Valley Black Talk Radio that follows that as well from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And that is a live broadcast of what's happening. And we're going to be talking about the aftermath of the water race, water hikes on the next episode. So we want to make sure you stay tuned for that. Actually, in this episode, what am I saying? <laughs> So we'll be talking about that later on in the program. And we want to let you know the AMP TV Now News will be on the air nation nationwide every day. At every 1 o'clock. Every day, every 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. And so. that specific standard time will be on 4 o'clock on Eastern Standard Time. And that'll be on Biz TV. So look at your local TV guide for that. And that's starting March 30th. And we'll have our producer, segment mm -hmm. producer Aja Cruz on technology and business, who will also be speaking with us shortly. We also have Nicole Dudley, who does lifestyle and entertainment. And of course, Jacoya Murphy, yes. who will head from education to what's happening in the present day to technology, social media, everything. And I know one thing we're looking for. We're looking for you experts out there that want to broadcast yourself and promote yourself nationwide. That's how many people? Uh, 30 million plus. And then 30 about million? 30 million plus, and then online, because BizTV also streams online to over 175 countries. Wow. That is, I'm going to say that again. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's what we'll say. And those are for experts nationwide and those do-it-yourself experts that have the special tips to help people get by in life better. That would be great. So before we get into our uh, cool modi, we want to let people know that there is an exhibit here in Fresno that marks the 50th anniversary of the Selma March. Bloody Sunday, otherwise known as, where the uh, Voting Rights Act, Civil Rights Act that the Lyndon, President Lyndon B. Johnson passed in 1964. Mm -hmm. So the Clovis Community Center has this historic, uh, at least in celebration of this historic moment, and they've had it, and they started in March 9th, I believe, on the actual historic day, mm -hmm. and they'll have that all the way till April 13th at the Clovis Community College Center. And this is called the I'm Walking for My Freedom, the Selma March and Voting Rights Act. And this is created by Matt Heron. He's the artist. He's a civil rights photographer. And it, that officially opened March 9th and will be open until April 13th. They are located on 10309 North Willow Avenue in Fresno, California. For more information about that exhibit and how you can take a look at it, you can call 559-325-5378. And when we look at civil rights, how important that is and still is today, we're looking at some of the things that are happening. For mm -hmm. instance, with the Sigma Alpha Epsilon oh, group, wow. the unfortunate to see college students who were obviously taught that either by adults or learned, it, that's a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. when we're seeing the repeat of there'll never be an N-word on a SAE. We're supposed to be this melting pot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's, that's tragic. One thing about it, that the, um, the president of the university is kicking them out as he stayed and making a big stand about that. They would not tolerate that. Mm -hmm. And also the organization mm -hmm. of that fraternity will not tolerate that type of behavior. And we shouldn't tolerate it either. And well, I'm glad that the president of the Oklahoma University actually stood up and said, you know, this is uh, not safe for students. 
and looked out for the safety of the students that he abruptly made them get all their stuff out and they had till midnight. By, by, by midnight. By midnight. So not only that, he's, you know, kicking them out. They might be getting expelled out yeah, of the university. Yeah, and two students I know have already gotten expelled and since then there might have been a few more. Mm -hmm. But that cannot be tolerated when we're talking about the American diaspora and the challenges that we're already going through. And so when we look at the voting rights from 1964 and also 1965, think about how they used to use literacy tests tax, uh, poll taxes, and other requirements to restrict the black vote. Wow. And that same year that this was signed, you had Malcolm X that had just gotten assassinated. You had the eruption of the Watts riots in Los Angeles. And at the same time, President Lyndon B. Johnson had to do an, enforce an executive order on affirmative action. Well, after the break, again, we're going to be talking about Kumo D, our experience here. We'll be talking mm -hmm. with Aja Cruz and also artist Michael McGow will be able to see a little excerpt from that exhibit, which is also part of that historic, monumental Africanism and African-American uh, pride exhibit mm -hmm. at the African-American Museum. And that opened also at the second week of March. And we'll also get to hear an excerpt from Valley Black Talk Radio, which is going to be featuring the aftermath of the water hike. Some city officials we get to talk to, so yes. hopefully you get to stay tuned for that. We'll be back, so stay tuned for more. You're watching Ami Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back. Attention Actos users, the FDA has warned about the risk of taking the type 2 diabetes drug Actos and now the manufacturer has been ordered to pay a staggering $9 billion in punitive damages for hiding evidence that Actos causes bladder cancer. If you or a loved one were diagnosed with bladder cancer after taking Actos, call the Rely On Group now at 800-619-1307 for a free consultation. That's 800-619-1307. Welcome back to On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Aja Cruz and we are here at the Michael McGow Experience Exhibit. And we, Mr. McGow wanted to reiterate the importance of his relationship and partnership here at the African American Museum. So we're going to tune into that. Let's take a look. Okay, real quick first, as you first come into the museum, you'll see that uh, things on the right side are inspired by Patrick Nagel. And it's a more of a graphic art type concept with uh, mixing in realism. And then I put my flavor to it by adding the different colors and different lines and different directions of lines to and contrast. And so as we're going around through the exhibit, you'll come over in this area here. This is all pencil work, and that's portraitures. And then uh, pencil would, would normally, uh, for lay people, would say pencil, but uh, technically we'd say uh, uh, graphite. And then uh, the technique used there is a lot of a line creates direction, motion, and uh, the subtlety of values and tones. So you'll see as I'm working there, I'm trying to get tonage, not too heavy and not too light, depending upon the ethnic background of the person or, or the, the tone or the light that's affected it. So understanding your light source. And I really try to focus on the eyes nose and mouth because that's the essence and the character of a person. So when you see that area, you'll see it working there. As you're coming around, you'll see this area that's right in here. This is the Americana type. This is uh, the different things that as I was growing up and accepting the, the responsibility and accountability of how I was blessed by God. And then on the other side, you see the hummingbirds and you see the rock and different things that are over there. That's just some landscape, seascape with a graphic touch to it. A lot of my stuff you'll see, it'll say mixed medium, which means uh, I mixed in pencil, color pencil, felt pen, uh, watercolor, airbrush material, uh, one shot uh, auto paint. I mean, just, <laughs> I just, whatever worked, I tried it. I mean, as an artist, I can get away with that kind of stuff. So you see that uh, when I uh, talk pottery, this is a lot of sculpture and then African art that's over here. 
dealing with my historical background and then finding the essence of myself to say, I am the son of kings and queens. I'm not a pauper. I don't want to be a, a person that just leeches off society. I want to be a contributing factor to society. So you see a development there. So I want to also say thank you so much to the African American Museum for allowing me to uh, have this show here and be able to exhibit uh, this. And I want to uh, uh, say uh, it is a fundraiser. It is a fundraiser. And uh, I know a lot of the pieces that are up are pricey. But if you like something, we can make copies of it. And then 90% of the proceeds come back to the, the AA fund. Thank you. Yeah. Our donation box is here. We need help. We need help. We need help in the museum. And uh, it was, it's going to be a new venture. It's going to be an awesome museum. They're going to uh, convert this site. It's going to be a, a living area, kitchen area, patio area. Those parking lots that are out there are going to be uh, converted into uh, a workspace. And it should be, uh, be a nice uh, art it's area that you can exhibit. And uh, upstairs, when uh, also, the history of African Americans that are in the San Joaquin Valley are upstairs. And throughout my life, there's always been uh, people supporting me, so it's, it's our turn to give. And I know a lot of you guys give already, but uh, let's throw a little bit back to Welcome back to All Me Sunday Mornings. And that you just saw was Mr. McGow giving his opening speech about his exhibit here at the African American Museum, which is a fundraiser. So you are welcome to come and check this out until April 31st. And this is called the McGow Experience. So next, let's take a look at some of his students on giving their McGow experience. <laughs> I'm showing up as a, a freshman 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, 30 years ago, play football, and and I I never had a black coach. Is that is that okay to say? Yeah, I, black or African American? <laughs> who cares? African American. I, number love. And and uh, you know, there's a little shock, just kind of a little setback, and thinking, you know, who, who is this person? And and and. Uh, I had him in class. He was my speech teacher. You remember teaching speech? Yeah. Um, but we did a lot of art in class and, and just um, had a profound impact on my life as a freshman and sophomore in high school coming from a town like Clovis where you just didn't, I didn't have that experience before. And so, um, but, but uh, I got the blessing to go back and teach with him. Um, and we've taught together for 23 years. The student body embraced me. And then, uh, and you were that, willing to share. Yeah, and they broke down barriers where people were saying, "No, no, they're all this way, they're all that." When they go, "Wait a minute, this guy's different from that." No, no, no. And then that broke, that made the beauty. So now tolerance is is, is not tolerance; it's acceptance. You know, because a lot of people say tolerance that means, "Oh, I'm just tolerating you." Yeah. But no, I accept you. And then that's uh, that's the tri trial here. Like a lot of the people that are here or former students or acquaintances or family members and and that's the beauty of uh, God having an impact on me and he had a plan for me to be in other people's a plan. lives. I, I, this guy has taught me so much because I didn't know anything about arts or anything. Miguel showed me. He took the time, he showed me how to do the shading correctly and uh, drawing on the lines and the dots with the inks. Yeah. I remember all that. It was funny because even though I was in wrestling, I was like, hey Martinez, you know you guys still got to turn something in. You haven't turned nothing in all year. <laughs> And that is a wrap with Michael McGow. Again, that exhibit is available at the African American Museum, located on 1857 Fulton Street in Fresno, California. And after the break, we're going to be talking some more about Cool Modi because we go to work. You're watching On May Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back. <laughs> Last week on Taxes of the Heart, we learned that Sophia owed over $10,000 in back taxes. They started garnishing my wages. What am I going to do? <laughs> Emmanuel, the handsome gardener, told her about the Tax 10,000 network. The experts at Tax 10,000 work with the IRS and state tax agencies directly. They can help in wage garnishments, stop collection letters, and lift liens and levies. Desperate. Sophia called Tax 10,000, and with their help, she was able to pay much less than what she originally owed. Grateful for Emmanuel's advice, she professed her love. Don't you see? I have always loved you. Sophia, my love. But what will happen next? To resolve your own tax problems, call the Tax 10,000 Network for a free tax debt analysis. Call 800-803-6816. That's 800-803-6816. Or go to tax10,000.com.
we are back. Welcome back to Army Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Delinaji, and I am here with Aja Cruz, who is also one of our segment producers for AMP TV Now News. In fact, let's talk about how that's going, because that's coming up March 30th. Yes, I'm very excited. I'm really been working on my segments, getting some experts in, so I'm looking forward to that. But now we want to talk about Cool Modi. And I definitely want to know from your generation's perspective about this presentation, what stuck out the most for you? Um, what stuck out the most to me was probably the question they asked him about how he felt about hip hop today in our generation. Okay. And he said that he sees a lot of passion in the artists, mm -hmm. but not the same passion as they had back in the day. And then in their creativity, he doesn't see much creativity in their work and also individuality. Everyone's dressing the same. Mm -hmm. Everyone's afraid to be themselves and everyone's worried about being cool mm -hmm. so that probably stood out the most to me also in how his generation it was all about the demand and what your words meant everything that you had to say had to rhyme mm -hmm. and it had to make sense so so could you listen to that today could yeah, you okay I could, I could. all right <laughs> uh, so who are some of those artists that stand out today that he's referring today. to where it stands out um, he was saying the Lil Wayne okay. and Drake, everyone's trying to be like them, even though he did acknowledge that they are part of Young Money and they mm -hmm. do have their own label. And it's all more about the business side today mm -hmm. instead of being creative. Do you feel that your generation listens to the lyrics? Is it about the beat? What is it about? Is it about the sound? I more so say the sound, what's catchy, what someone will remember, what someone will dance to in the club nowadays, more so than the message mm -hmm. and actually learning something positive from what's coming from the music. There's not much positive mm -hmm. impact in today's music. And why is that? Because people are still jamming to it. They're still dancing at the club. Hey, it's a nice <laughs> beat. But they might be talking about killing your mama, I'm just saying. Right. Uh, <laughs> they're, I think they're more so into it maybe be just because it is a good song. Mm -hmm. and they they rather listen to it because of the beat and mm -hmm. not really listening to what the song is saying. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Aja Cruz, segment producer for AMPTV Now News, commenting on Cool Mo D. After the break, you hear a breakdown from us old schoolers, <laughs> myself and Linus Najib. You are watching On Me Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back. Now we're back on Sunday morning, on me Sunday morning. My name is Lennis Nanji here with Aja Cruz. And we're here with Dr. T. Hassan Johnson. T. Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, tell me about this event. What made you bring um, Kool Mo D, that particular artist, here to Fresno State? Well, this is the uh, Hip Hop Research and Interview Project, and I've done this every year for the last six years. And I brought, uh, over the years, I brought KRS-One, I brought Chuck D, I brought um, uh, a number of different artists from X-Clan to Supernatural to Medusa to, you know, just a, w a wide variety. And Kumo D was perfect because he, um, he's brilliant. He's an intellectual cat and he's artistic and articulate. Oh, okay. My other question is, do you feel that the students can relate? I know that he's an older generation. He's, he's back, not saying that I'm old, right, but he's right, back right. in my time right. day when I remember the Wild Wild West, as everybody keeps stating one of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, how did the students uh, relate to that, and or could they relate to that? Well, in some ways they did. In some ways it was new. I mean, I've been a fan for about 35 years of his work. And so for them, that's, that's a little more than they're used to. But I think getting a chance to connect with an artist that has that kind of platform, that much history, they learned about hip hop. They learned about something they thought they knew from someone who was there when it started. And so they connected in, on, on those grounds. Um, I learned a lot about his standpoint from hip hop, how he broke down the timeline from generation to generation. But I also wanted to know exactly how Dr. Johnson feels about the generation of today's hip hop and their music. 
<laughs> but it depends. I mean, I hear a lot of artists that are creative and doing something new, and that's the, those are the artists I gravitate towards. And then I hear some that sound like they're cookie cutter and they sound like everybody else. And I always gravitate toward the creative artists. But I would love to see those creative young artists connected with the older generation so they know where it comes from. And so that's what my goal is with this project, to connect people with what's been happening. And that way you can see the history of it, even if it's brand new, you can see where it comes out of. And that's what I like to privilege. I would like to thank you, Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, and we'll be back. Hello, we are here back on On Me Sundays. My name is Aja Cruz, and today we have Cool Mo D here at Fresno State. And one of the first questions I would like to ask is, how do you feel about the importance of speaking to our younger generation today? Oh, for me, it's just the next phase. Actually, what I want to do all along, but it's the next phase of the evolution in, in terms of hip hop and artistry, uh, just in the connectivity. I think that from generation to generation, the biggest flaw in what our separation is is the ageism. We literally have a group of youth that don't want to hear from the elders and a group of elders that are disenchanted with the youth and I'm like that's where the power is. The power is in the continuum. If you realize that you're a part of a continuum even if you just approach from an artist space, uh, give an old school artist a second shot and give a new artist a break, you'll never lose because you'll keep the train going. And that information train is what we really, really need. So I can come back and say, hey, this is how you can manage your money better. This is the kind of records you could do. This is what you need to watch out for. So I think that connectivity is extremely important. Okay, thank you. And our next question is, what is your perception now on being an MC? Personally, or you mean other MCs? Other MCs. Well, unfortunately, this generation of MCs are clever in many ways, uh, creative in many ways, but their focus seems to be more about the money aspect than anything else. And it just doesn't feel like originality is that important. And one of the primary fundamental tenets of hip hop is be original because originality always has a way of breaking through. Whether you go back to Biggie or you go back to Rakim, even though, yeah, they took ideas from other people or cadences from other people in their thought process, their style and what they did with it was totally original. And that's what makes you separated. And that's why I use Tupac as an example for him to be viewed as a thug or whatever you want to call him or him have thugging on his chest, but also make a record called Dear Mama. Unique individual unique perspective and a unique approach to being an MC that's what a real MC is yes and lastly I would like to know about your future record stop killing and what can we expect from you we'll be dropping stop killing uh, probably this spring I would say May you know they want to come earlier but I'm like let's make the record right uh, you know the stuff that's happening in Ferguson and the Trayvon Martin thing from years back and the I can't breathe thing in New York and the cop killing a kid and it's like we really really have to address this and I can't believe that hip-hop hasn't addressed this this generation hasn't done a self-destruction or mm -hmm. stop the violence record so mm -hmm. I'm like all right well I'll do one and then we'll do a remix and I'll get some of the old heads on it and if it makes sense for the elders to do it then the elders will do it so be it if the mm -hmm. if the younger MC want to be worried about their brand we'll still continue to worry about the people it is what it so is so much going on today in the Mike Brown case and the Ferguson case I feel is very important for someone to create this record so we're looking forward to that absolutely alrighty thank you cool Wow, so now we're wrapping up our Kumo D that we just got to interview, talk to. You got to talk to Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, Fresno State professor who brought Kumo D. Um, I had no idea how the media was influenced um, and the they were, very, they were hand picking, well, right? Well, it, well, well the media just, was influencing the stories you're talking well, about. More or less in the stories okay. and more or less um, how they can advance and, and how they can develop their, their, their artistic skills. Mm -hmm and who they handpicked mm -hmm. that they wanted to be in front of the audience. And notice how that changed. You talked about gangsta rap mm -hmm. and all of the other kind of fluffy rap is what I call it. <laughs> in that 1989 era, because before they had Chuck D and Public Enemy, they came out with a statement mm -hmm. and Karis One, who was always professing and teaching in his lyrics. And then it's like it, it changed and they handpicked who they wanted to be in front to, he talked about derailing the masses as far as educating them. Instead it was about Tupac against Biggie. It was about East Coast versus West Coast. Well, I like the fact that he's about his principles. Mm -hmm. He don't allow money um, to influence his principles. And, and being Which is in, a stigma today in yeah, the rap culture, right? Yeah, so everybody in the rap culture, especially African Americans, they're going after the money. I'm doing this for the money. Yeah. One thing I am glad before we wrap it up, I'm glad he made it clear that the sagging style, which he said came, came from, from prisons, prison. yeah. 
it also came it also suggests that you are open for business so that's for young people open, that are so for, business. open for that's what he what said what does that mean no, what do you sure. think it means <laughs> <laughs> okay let your so, mind soar on what that means. But that's uh, what he said. It means you're open for business. The saggy I don't want jeans. my mind to soar no further Well, than that's as far anywhere. as I'm soaring. Okay. But, I just, but some of those famous albums you might want to check out that he did have, I go to work, Wild Wild West, How You Like Me Now, which I liked, he said, at the age of 25 when they were trying to tell him he was too old to rap anymore. That was kind of like a stab at you saying, yeah, How You Like Me Now. And that mm -hmm. became a popular yes. hit. I like the fact that I go to work, work. You know, I love yeah, that work. song. You know? Work. So I used to bump that song on my, my A lot of us used stereos. to bump that song. So. A lot of us did. So, and before we wrap it up, we want to watch this excerpt of Valley Black Talk Radio. It's our water hike part two discussion. And this time it's with city officials. So people know what to do next about the pocketbook that might be getting a little less. Let's mm. watch, take a look. The first increase will actually start uh, at the end of this month coming okay. up here. And the average person who might you know, right now be paying about $24, $25 a month uh, for the actual, now think about this, we're talking about the difference between the water rates and the actual utility bill. Okay. So the water rates are only a third of the entire bill because you've also got, when you get your utility bill from the city, it also includes the uh, sewer rates and the garbage rates, right? So. Okay. This particular portion of the bill, even though the water rates will end up doubling over the next five years on your utility bills, it's only going to be an increase of about 30 to 40 percent for the, the average Fresno customer. But, you know, any increase for a lot of folks, as you well know, is, is going to be, you know, kind of a challenge out there. So we did, we did two things. First of all, the rate for the average uh, Fresno uh, rate payer right now is going to go up about $3.25 in this next bill. Okay. And of course, you'll see them go up gradually over the next five years. Okay. Um, but what we've also done is we've structured the bill differently. You know, the, the way the old rates were set up, over half your bill was tied into a fixed meter rate, mm -hmm. which means 55% of your bill you had no control over, you know, depending mm -hmm. on how much water you actually use. The way the new structure is, by the time we get finished, two thirds of your bill will end up being uh, based on what they say consumption, how much water you use. So you actually, if you drop your, uh, your water use over like 20%, you're going to end up saving another $10 a month uh, by the time we get through uh, at the end of five years. So, you know, hopefully, you know, when people start conserving, they start thinking about, mm, you know, if, if the water bill's a little too high, maybe I'll use a little less water, watering my lawn or what have you. Uh, it, it's going to end up, I think, giving them more control over that final bill hike and what you can do to help soften the blow to the wallet and you know you, you can always go to vbtradio.org to watch more of that episode in valley black talk radio and they're on every sunday on 1680 a.m from 9 p.m to 12 a.m live well i guess that wraps up this edition of on me sunday, sunday morning. mornings <laughs> until next week my name is julia Deli najib along with lennis najib have a great week